Seattle Variety Show, coming to you from the Columbia City Theater with your host, Kevin Joyce. Thank you, everybody. Welcome to the show. Thanks for coming to Big Night Out. You know, on the way to the theater tonight, I ran into uh, Reverend Jeremiah Wright. You guys have heard of him. He was like, going into a meeting with Carl Rove. I'm like, dude, he's like, what? I'm like, yo. He's like, huh. And that pretty much sums up the debate politically right now. Uh, so if you've been to the show, you know that every show we have a theme. Every episode has a theme. Most themes are absolutely awesome. Um, last month, not so much. Um, so we're going to go with a much more user-friendly theme. This month, it's Mother's. Your mothers. Whoa. That was a tough response. How many of you have mothers? <laughs> that you get along with. Mothers that completely understand and approve of your choice in clothing. Or a car. Or, or a mate. Mothers who completely refrain from making subtle comments when they come visit your house. <laughs> See, you don't have to write jokes about mothers. They're freaking hilarious! <laughs> you know, it's been said that um, children and grandparents have, get along so well because they have a common enemy. Um, <laughs> I absolutely adore and honor my mother, but every time she comes to visit, I find myself furiously scrubbing my stovetop. Is that, no, no one else? <laughs> Yeah, that's great. You just let your mom do it when she comes in. Well, she will too. That's why I do it. No, mothers inspire cleanliness. Like fathers inspire conversational aptitude in sporting statistics. <laughs> hey, that was sexist. Yes, it was. And there's plenty more where that came from. Because in addition to this show being about mothers, it's going to be the politically incorrect interpretation of mothers. This is the Seattle you didn't think you knew. The postmodern Seattle, where it's hip to be wrong-headed. Tonight's show is about mothers. Please say hello to the Cheese Factor. <laughs> you guys normally play something when I say please. You just felt like taking. They've, they've heard it before. They've heard it before. You decided not to play anything. All right, let's start the show. You ready to go? <laughs> Our first act tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Quote spins Roots music into something that even a rock apostle will love. They uh, can be seen regularly at Connor Byrne in Ballard or the Water Street Brewing in Port Townsend. They have CDs and t-shirts available in the lobby, but of course, those of you watching at home can't get those. But go to the Big Night Out website and you can find out where to get their CDs. In fact, go to Big Night Out website to find out about any show, group rather, in tonight's show, and you can find out where they're performing and where to get their CDs, etc. Tonight's group is gonna play a tune as one of their hits. It's called Daisy, and it's about a VW van. They are Jason Moji, Kim Trenery, and Chess Ferguson, otherwise known as the Foot Stomping Spirit Lift and Deadwood Revival. <laughs> Questions. The 
answers were all numbers out the window of my 66. I bought for just 800 days or years and miles ago. I don't know. I stopped counting when the golden rays of a setting sun reflected off the emblem right as day on to an overpass. Just below the rails, lighting up, I love you, Daisy, painted by an upside down romantic face. Go to the Big Night Out website to find out more about Deadwood Revival. They'll be performing upcoming at Folk Life and the Wanda Fuca Festival, and they perform all over the place. Dang it. Our next act, ladies and gentlemen, are five guys. Definitely none of them are mothers. They're part of a much larger group of comedians based both in Seattle and Tacoma. They uh, have a youth outreach program. That was like George Bush. They have a youth outreach program. <laughs> I did that, but I'm not going to do it again. They have a youth outreach program, and they perform at lots of nonprofit events. They can be seen in Tacoma at the University of Puget Sound, where many of them go to school, and in Seattle at such venues as Annex Theater and the Capitol Hill Arts Center. Please welcome Ubiquitous They Improv Comedy. Hello, hello, we are Ubiquitous Day Improv Comedy. And what we do is we make up scenes on the spot from suggestions like people with, like you. Those are the kind of people that we use. <laughs> and for the first game that we are going to play for you tonight, it's called The Onion. I'm gonna need Raleigh to come up. And the way this game works is we start a scene with one person and then we add another person and another person, and another person, and another person. There's five of us, I think. Yes, there are five. And once we have all five of us on here, we will then peel us off like an onion. Ha <laughs> ha. 
OK, so for Raleigh, can I have a suggestion from over here of uh, something that reminds you of your mother? A kitchen. A scene about a kitchen. Take it away, Raleigh. Oh, no. <laughs> Dang it. Oh, clean it up, clean it up, clean it up. Freeze. OK, toss me the barrel over here. Ready? Ready. We are such manly men. We are such manly men. In Have manly you seen our low-cut shirts? Ugh. Freeze. OK, the butter churning contest begins now. <laughs> yeah, we see some nice wrist action over here. Some nice swirly, twirly moves. Freeze. All right, good. Dwarf tossing should be a good sport this year. We got some good teams lined up. All right, my Taunt dad. You. I'll replace him. Freeze. All right, give me that. And OK, you ready? Where do you want me to put the anvil, sir? Oh, Whoa. Oh, I don't know my own ow, strength sometimes. Ow, I'm sorry. Ow, help me. Get it off, please. Just get it off. Oh, oh come on. Shake it off, you baby. Us, uh, are we going to forge or what? Uh, I, need, I need to go to the hospital. Uh, I'll, I'll be right back. So here's your new, uh, new little troll. Oh. I'm going to let you just go. All right, alive, now toss it. Get it in there. Poof. All right, I'm going to go tally your scores. That's a foul for punting and not tossing. Look at this butter churning form, folks. It's quite unique. The not moving. I hurt my butter. I think. <laughs> you butter go check that out. I'll get a doctor. <sighs> yeah, yeah. <sighs> I think, I think my muscles are so big, they're now small, you know? That's why you don't see big muscles. That, I, I believe it. Oh, they've they've gone through the whole world. You oh, know yeah. what? I'm going to go get some tape to check. Do that. Oh, now it's on fire. Oh. Fire department? Yeah, it's me again. <laughs> <laughs> and see. All right. On um, this next game, we're going to play it called Deaf Translator. Uh, Travis here will be the host of his own television show. Hi. Uh, John here will be the guest on said special show. And Clayton here will be um, interpreting what these two say to you without words. Um, from the audience, can I get um, something your mother told you never to do as a child? Smoke. Smoke. Hello, folks. We are here today at the, uh, the smoke shop with Sir Smokes a lot, Smokey the Bear. How does it feel to be a bear of your stature? It feels stupendous, like I can wrap myself around the whole world in my greatness. You ever done anything that you thought was very, very weird? Ah, uh, I did. I tried smoking a cigarette when I was young. That is very weird. What's the, uh, what's the biggest thing you ever tried to smoke? A sycamore tree? <sighs> Uh, I did smoke a sycamore tree, but then Smokey the Bear told me that I needed to change my ways. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I thought you were Smokey the Bear. Who do I got here? You have Smokey the Bear's twin brother, the <laughs> giant... I, I'm going to need you to prove that. Could you, uh, like... Yeah, no exp problem. Explain how you might roll around in the wild? Well, first, I roll around in the wild, um, repeatedly. Yes. Uh, getting rid of the smoke protruding from my from body. The, from the sycamore tree. From the sycamore tree. And at what point does the real Smokey the Bear come in and interrupt your shenanigans? Um, well, usually about now. He goes disguised as a deaf translator. Those are nice. <laughs> Back! That's all the time we have tonight on Smokes A Lot Smokety Smoke Smoke Factory. Thanks for stopping by. All right, cool. Now we're going to play a game called Change. Two people will be for, pre performing a scene, and those people are Taylor and Raleigh. And Clayton will be saying Change. As they say elements in the scene, Clayton will say Change, and they have to change those elements and continue with the scene. All right, can I get a suggestion? Something that your mother would rather not sit on. I'm sorry? A cactus. I heard cactus first. Go away. Uh, I sat on a cactus. You need to take me to the hospital. All right, all right. Well, get in this cactus mobile. Change. Get in this Lamborghini Diablo. Change. Get in this 
Ambulance. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, I, I can't help it. You need to take him out right now. All right, all right, all right. We'll pull over to the side of the road. Get out. All right. Just, just take him out right now, please. I can't, I can't handle it. Oh, God, just leave him in there. Please, it feels so good. I'm going to take him out. Change. I'm gonna oh, use... God, I love cactus spines in my butt. <laughs> They're not healthy. I'm going to use these tweezers. Okay, okay. Boink. Change. Oh. Good chunk. Change. Larkin. <laughs> That was the weirdest sound. Is it normal? Uh, whoa, whoa, whoa. You're not thinking about dropping that needle on the ground, are you? I'm with the needle collection agency. You're going to have to check that into this bucket. ka -ching. Change. Dunk. Change. Norkin. <laughs> that's not a needle. That's a Norkin berry, you fool. Whoa. <laughs> and oh. scene. <laughs> Ubiquitous they. Comedy yeah. improv. Yeah. Fine. Find them on a semi-regular basis at the University of Puget Sound. Um, I'm excited to introduce our next act, ladies and gentlemen. He gained his interest in circus in Mexico when he was working for a family-owned and family-operated circus as a roustabout. He eventually became, according to his true story, the caretaker of the hippopotamus Pepe and the 95-year-old elephant Maurice. And he gained a certain claim to fame, being likely the only gringo in history to administer a garden hose enema to an elephant in Mexico. <laughs> He's so not doing that tonight. Um, no, he couldn't get a garden hose. Um, but he came back to Seattle and trains at the fabulous Sanka, which is the school of acrobatics and new circus arts. And if you don't know about Sanka in Georgetown, check it out. It's a fabulous place to learn about Sanka. Please give a warm welcome to otherwise known as Metro Bus Driver, Jonathan Rose.
Jonathan Rose, ladies and gentlemen. Jonathan Rose. Check out Sanka, the School of Acrobatics and New Circus Arts as well. Ladies and gentlemen, I hold in my hand a hat. If you've been to the show before, you know that in this hat are the names of audience members. You yourselves have put your names in this hat for the opportunity to come on stage in about 10 minutes, 12, might be as long as 14 minutes to participate in a little game we call the Big Night Out competition of unusual intelligence and skill, which is quite frankly too long. So instead, we simply call it, we call it, everyone together, one, two, three, four. We call it fame or shame. The cheese factor, ladies and gentlemen. The next number, ladies and gentlemen, is gonna be me, uh, joined by the lovely and talented Jennifer Sutherland on backup vocals. Let's hear it for Jennifer Sutherland coming on stage right now! And also joined by the Cheese Factor on, uh, on the other stage up there above us. It's uh, Craig Flory, John Olafs, Bill Shaw, Bill Shaw, Bill Shaw, gotta say his name three times, and Rob Moitoza on bass. We're gonna do a tune that uh, I wrote. You know, this show is about, um, we're gonna do a tune I wrote. You know, this show is about, I'm gonna say everything three times. We're gonna do a tune I wrote. You know, this show is about mothers. And uh, my mother always told me, if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say, don't say anything at all. Well, this is uh, about how that didn't always work out so well. It's called, I Won't Remember You. <laughs> most decidedly unpleasant person I've ever had the misfortune not to avoid in spite of all my well-intentions attempt to like you I failed now every time I say nice to see you I'm lying it just comes out that way it's not that I can't tell the truth I'm trying to think of the right thing to say. I won't remember you fondly. And I won't want to have you behind me. But I do as I walk away from you. Shake the image or stand in there looking nasty, unfriendly, and unkind, and I can't make you shut up. So what I do is I take a mental dry eraser and wipe you off my mind. Cause Mother Truth can be horrible, and when I face her, sometimes it's good.
ladies and gentlemen, I'm delighted to introduce is a, was a top 10 finalist in the national NBC Stand Up for Diversity Comedy Search. She's a proud member of the People's Republic of Comedy, that's comedy with a K, and she performs at such uh, traditional venues as the Comedy Underground and the Main Stage and alt comedy venues such as Laugh Hole, which is where I saw her. She wants to say to you, thank you for now and in the future supporting local stand-up live comedy. Please welcome Aziza Diaz. Thanks. Thanks. Oh, it's wrapped. Yes. Hi. Uh, hi. Hey. My name's Aziza. It's a little unusual. Uh, thanks. Um, yeah, it's uh, Aziza, A-Z-I-Z-A, -Z -Z -A, same way backwards as forwards. It's a palindrome. Um, it's also... Uh, a derivative of the word azizudi, which ancient Arabs used to describe an irritation of the smooth muscle brought about by sand which has entered the pants. <laughs> but we're not gonna talk about that. Uh, what I wanna talk about tonight, I wanna share with you guys uh, about what's happening for me in my life because I care and I want to bond with you as a collective because that would seem hot, totally hot. So, <laughs> so, uh, so I am, I'm negotiating a contract of love with one man, person, dude. Okay, I want to make it happen. I want there to be the bond there because I notice that I have a tendency to, to have wants like to want many things, to be distracted by the colorful things like iPods that come in so many shapes. And you know they're gonna make like little heart iPods soon and little star iPods and they're gonna embed an iPod in the side of a coffee mug and I'm gonna want one. So no, 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 just focus on the man. Let's satisfy this whole thing here with us. Yes, we will do that. So, uh, working on that. So in order to, uh, make the bond, I consented to do something which I don't normally do with people, and that is to spend the entire night through the night at said dude's home, in his place. Yeah, fine, I'm gonna seal the bond. So why don't I do this? I will share, we're friends now. So because as you see me now, I'm upright. I've also combed and primped I look respectable, I look fine. Ah, yeah. oh, yes. All right. But when evening descends and I go horizontal, the demon spirits of the night will, will come. Oh, yes. And it's, it's the rat hobgoblins from the floorboards enter my hair. And they, they ravage and pillage, and, and it's like a, like a ragweed party, and I'm left with a bonanza of of fluff that is, yeah, it's like this. And, and, and then because of the, the nightmare and the, the nightmares and the insomnia and the twitch fits, my face will swell during the night. Does this happen to anybody, the, the swelling of the face? But it's not proportional, right? It's like, it's like a left bag under the eye and then a lip and the nose is kind of swollen. Okay, not a good look. So, so that happens. And then what else? Okay, the new zit plan for the new day. Oh yeah, not the old zit plan, it's, it's a new day now, and, and we all know that once a zit goes away, yet another comes to stay. Yeah, that's how it is. It has been written. Okay, so that's a problem. In addition, the old dancer wound, so I'm limping, maybe for the first 20 minutes of the morning. Not, not, a, not a fresh appearance I give in the early morn. All right, you're with me. Ladies, all right, so, uh, so I'm up, the guy's up early, he has a day job, so we showered at, I don't know, 4.30, what does he do, I have, I have no idea, he's, he's, he's singing, he's doing whistling, he looks fresh as a daisy on a summer's morn, he, how, how, I don't know, he, 
He meditated. I don't know what he did. He looks good. He, he, uh, he looks like a newly born buttercup in the dewy glades. I don't know, like, I don't know what it is. Men, men, all right, whatever. So then he's, he's looking here, he's shaving, he's whistling. Remember how I look. I approach from the back. <laughs> She beast of the hinterlands. I've, I feel like a sub mammal raised by feral goat people. <laughs> and, he, and he sees me approaching from the back, from the, the mirror, and he, God bless him, you know, he tried to hide it. But you can't suppress a gag. <laughs> it's like a physical reaction brought about when your body is repulsed. So. <laughs> Fine. So, you know, I'm, I, I choose to eschew breakfast, lest my face melt the eggs. <laughs> but I'm, I'm going to try to build the bond. I'll, I'll probably call. I, I, I'll probably call him. I left. I left. I, 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 it was fine. No, it wasn't. It was horrible. It was horrible. But it, but it wasn't as bad as it could have been. It might have been worse had I had I possibly farted and, and just floated out of the room on a gaseous cloud created by me. It would have been less appealing. Okay, so not as bad as it could have been. <laughs> Tough. But I, I will probably continue to, uh, to pursue this contract of love because, because if there's any, any possibility that we can recapture the gift given to us as children, uh, the love we felt uh, from our mothers, from our mothers, that's it. I wanna get off now, can I get off? <laughs> All right, thanks. Aziza Diaz, she wrapped it back to the theme. That was beautiful. Our next act, ladies and gentlemen, is going to perform in a couple weeks in New York City at the essentially Ellington Jazz Competition. They and other members of their high school's world-renowned music program perform in jazz combos all over the city. They just got back, along with the rest of their group, winning the Reno Jazz Festival. Please welcome Zubin Hensler, Ian Butler, and Colleen Gilligan from the Garfield High School Jazz Band.
and Colleen Gilligan from Garville High School Jazz Band. Dang it! Garville High School Jazz Band. It is a thing to behold, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a time for that part of the program that we all look forward to, like a two-week visit from our mothers-in-laws. I have in my hand a hat from which we're going to pull the names for Big Night Out. And I'd like to start by saying, everyone in the audience, please turn your cell phones on. Turn your cell phones on. This is a little unusual, you understand, in a while. The three names, please come on down, are Jennifer Braden. Jennifer, come on down. Bring your cell phone. Yeah, bring your cell phone. That's a beautiful thing. Looking for Don Miller. Bring, come on down. It's Don Miller. We're going to pull Don Miller. Oh, thank you, Don, right up here. Thank you very much. Now, while they come on down, ladies and gentlemen, we will provide the visuals. If you've ever been to Big Night Out, you know that in Fame or Shane, the winner gets a fabulous prize, the loser gets a fabulous prize, and the one in the middle gets the grand prize and the pie. Why does the one in the middle get the pie? Because here at Big Night Out, we think... Now that's funny, you three, four, one. Great, thank you for coming, ladies and gentlemen. Let's hear it for David, Jennifer, and Don. Let's hear it for our brave contestants. You have, your, uh, you have your blowers, your party blowers. You want to test the party blowers, please? Just to make sure that they work. No talking on the cell phone yet. Test the party blowers. Go ahead. There we go. Some production values for you right there. OK, ladies and gentlemen, since tonight's theme is mothers, every round will relate to mothers. The first round is a simple question. It has to do with how well you listened to your mother. Please, each of you, um, three points for the one who listened to their mother's wishes the most. What, contest number one, what did your mother want you to do when you grew up? Graduate high school. And did you? <laughs> yes. One point for you! <laughs> Contest number two, what did your mother want you to do when you grew up? Talk into the microphone, please, and don't be shy. Get married and have babies. And did you get married uh -huh. and have babies? Yes, one point for you. Oh. Let's hear it, great. <laughs> <laughs> and and talk into the mic. You, 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 and right? and you, you, did, you did all of it right. I don't really know you, so I don't really <laughs> care. <laughs> Contestant number three, what did your mother want you to do when you grew up? Grow up. Grow up, and did you? No. no, good, so two, two, and zero points for test number three. Okay, round two, uh, please imitate each of you something your mother would say to you as a kid. Three points for the most convincing sense that mother is here in the room. Two points for the next one, and one point for the last one. Contestant number one, imitate something your mother would say to you as a kid. Talk right into the microphone, please step up to the microphone. There you go, go ahead. Don, Wesley, don't do that. <laughs> Pretty good. Contestant number two, right into the microphone. You're late for school, get up now! Contestant number two, yeah, huh? <laughs> Contestant number three, something your mother would say to you, convince us. Wait till your father gets home. <laughs> ah. I'm going three, two, one. This is an honor system, keep track of your own score. How many points does he have? Seven. Two. How many points does she have? One. Two. Two, and how many points does he have? Three, three. You guys are super duper helpful. Okay, round three. Laser quick questions related to mother. If you know the answer, blow the buzzer and answer the question. Music, please. What is another name for the abbess or nun in charge of a convent of women? Contest number three. Mother Holy Sup mother. Mother superior. Mother superior, one point right there. Yes, number two, God. in science fiction lore, what is the name of a spacecraft at the heart of the fleet? Contestant number three. Captain. Mother ship. The mother ship. One point. Blow your buzzer if you know the answer. Name the well-known figure associated with literary fairy tales or nursery rhymes. <laughs> Contestant number mother two. Mother goose. Mother goose. Point right there. Number, you're doing pretty well over here, aren't you? <laughs> Question number four. Name of the mother in the Brady Bunch. Contestant number three. Carol. Carol? <laughs> Number five, who can say mother in three languages other than English? <laughs> Contestant number one, 
Madre. And? <laughs> Mom. And? <laughs> Mamma Mia. Okay, we'll give it to him. <laughs> Number six. Name the famous Freudian complex based on the Greek, Greek myth where a man killed his father and married his mom. That's number three. Oedipus. The Oedipus complex. <laughs> Final question in this round. Name a dish of your mother's that you never told her you hated. That's number one. Her tuna casserole. Tuna casserole. <laughs> Keeping track of our score, how many points do you have? Ten. Ten? <laughs> You're sure you want 10 points? How many points do you have? Like three. Six points, thanks, your husband says six. How many points does he have? Let's give him, let's give him six, okay? So it's six, six, and 10 points. Okay, the final round. The winner will get, the winner will get five points, the loser two points, and the, and the, uh, the real bottom loser one point, um, just so that you can actually possibly win. Final round. In an homage to political incorrectness and sexism, in other words, it's meant to be offensive, um, laugh. <laughs> you will have 60 seconds to multitask like the mother of yesteryear, completing four tasks simultaneously. They are make a grocery list of 10 items. You don't do it yet, but when you have to start. Put on lipstick, drop an egg on the floor and clean it up, and call someone on the telephone, but not just anyone. You have to call a mother, anybody's mother, and get a piece of advice from them and report it back to us. You have 60 seconds to call, don't do it yet. 60 seconds to call someone on the phone, any mother get a piece of advice, make a list of 10 grocery, not you can't call yet. Make a list of 10, you're not calling yet. Make a list of 10 grocery items, put on lipstick, drop an egg on the floor and clean it up. Music please, 60 seconds, ready, go. Better call someone first. We've researched this. Pay close attention to how they're doing. And we found that if you make the phone call first, you're likely to get someone. But all three of them are going for the grocery list first, aren't they? Yeah, that's about 45 seconds left. I would call someone now if I were you. Yep. You have about 30 seconds left. How's this going for you guys? Pretty good? I dropped the egg pretty soon, too. Yeah, drop the egg, yeah. a boy! Drop the egg and clean it up. Clean it up, cleaning up the egg. Yeah, you have about one more chance to go. That's, how's it going for you? Yeah, you better clean that up. Better clean that up pretty well. Yes, go! 30 seconds left. Good, 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 nice! Good, good, nice! Nice with the egg! Very nice with the egg. Shoes, the other guy's good. Gets, how's that advice going? How's that phone call going for you over there? Pretty good? Yeah, great. Can't even get the phone out of his pocket. That's nice, though. Going well for you. It's about the end of it. We told you, and no, she dropped the list. Good. You have about 10 seconds left. This is, this is good television. I don't care who, what anybody says. Everybody, are we done? Is this, this is the last one, isn't it? Five seconds left, you guys. Get some advice. Let's hear it. I'm sorry. Do you have the piece of advice yet? Uh, that would be still ringing. Still ringing. <laughs> Do you have the piece of advice? My mother-in-law is the best. What did she say? She said, "Talking to the microphone." Oh, they can't hear you. She said, "Always go sailing and keep your husband happy." Yes. <laughs> did she just really get that, or is she making that up? We're gonna give it to her. No. Four points right there. Did you get any advice? She hung up. She hung up. <laughs> that makes you the winner Thank with 11 you. points. No, I'm sorry, your time. You, and you got, you actually got the mother on the phone? That gives you two points, two points. That's 12 right there, he's the winner. 12, 11, and he ends up with six points. As the winner, you will receive um, a fabulous Big Night Out t-shirt. You may leave the stage. Wait a minute, wait, wait a minute. Oh, whoa, 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 come back, come back, come back, I'm sorry. It's been uh, pointed out by some of our audience members that you actually don't have any lipstick on. So that means you did not win! Did he, did he get lipstick on? How many in the audience think he got lipstick on? No, you, you saw him get lipstick on? A respectable mother in the house saw him get lipstick on. You may leave the stage! 
You, as the loser, will receive a Kevin Joyce CD. The loser on, on Big Night Out always receives a Kevin Joyce CD. You may leave the stage. Thank you very much. And that leaves you, interestingly and significantly, with the pie. Music, please. Come with me. Come with me. You may put this, you may put this in your pocket. Now, it was pointed out to me recently in a production meeting that the girls never get the pie in the face. And I'm like, I am so giving it to a girl this time. It wasn't intentional. Come on, this way. This way. Yeah. I know. I know. Come in. No, no, no. Come on with me. Now, here at Big Night Out, come on down here. I don't actually pie you in the face. Come on down here. Come on. You have to pie yourself in the face. No, come on down here. You, come on down here. You have to do it. Right now, come right down here. You encourage your lady. No, you can't buy me. It's not legal. Buy yourself. In the, you just have to buy yourself in the face. Or you can get a proxy and you can go give it to your husband right now in the face if you want. Right there, ladies and gentlemen. Let's hear it. Now, this is just gonna further the sense of sexism on the show because I was asked, why do you not have a woman get the pie in the face? And I said, nice! Okay. This is, this is, this just went from a family show to clearly PG-13. Okay. Very good, thank you very much. Because I knew, she said, I'm from Philly, you don't wanna do this. And I'm like, okay, you can put it in your husband's face. Our final act this evening, ladies and gentlemen, was formed in September of 2007 and has since taken Seattle by storm, performing at all sorts of venues. They are Seattle's only all-girl Bangra dance team. They are a group of dedicated and energetic young women dedicated to promoting South Asian awareness through their dance. Please welcome the delightful Sherni Invasion. <laughs>
more information about coming to the next show, go to the Big Night Out website, www.seattlechannel.org slash Big Night Out. Thank you, mostly thank you. All the performers, come on stage, think about Aziz and Diaz. Come on up, Deadwood Revival. Thanks for coming to the show, everybody. See you next time.